Hello friends, welcome to my YouTube channel where I share many great ideas. This is an introduction to the construction of uh, my sander that I introduced last spring, I believe it is. There is uh, two parts to the construction video. One, uh, first one, I show you how to make the uh, rollers. And the second one is basically a lot of assembly work. The last one is uh, fairly long because there's a lot of things to uh, consider in putting it together, as well as I bring it to the stage and uh, demonstrate uh, using it there for a few minutes. Also in the second video, I will have a plan and uh, introduce you to the model that I've uh, made where it is attached, uh, has its own motor in its own cabinet. This one attaches to the metal lathe. I found it uh, works really well. It's easy to uh, put on and use and when I'm not using the lathe I have a, a sander, use it as a sander. Anyway, uh, I call this kind of my super sander. It's uh, super nice to use. It uh, super easy to build. It's uh, super easy to adjust the tracking and it, overall it's just a super unit and uh, I it's find it works a lot better than uh, well I wouldn't say better but I, I, I like it because it uh, over the commercial ones because the commercial ones are so fast and it tends to burn the wood especially on end grade. Uh, as it sits right here right now, uh, you can sand long pieces off of one end and onto the and out the other end. That was all demonstrated in the other video. And uh, to do that and to collect the dust, I have uh, this little dust collection thing here, and it just comes in and goes into your dust collection there. And uh, then also uh, to uh, This one here will uh, fasten right on there with uh, two screws and uh, then you have a block here and the uh, collects the uh, sawdust very well. With this uh, hood on here and, and that block on there sanding a lot of small projects there, the dust will just be sucked into the here. You don't even have to have the dust collector on and it seems to collect all the dust as well without having to uh, turn it on but anyway so anyway I'm uh, we'll go right into the construction of this and uh, I hope you enjoy it and I and I hope uh, quite a number of you uh, uh, build one of these it's uh, again it's very easy to build so uh, we'll start building so go for it okay I'm going to show you uh, how to make the rollers, that's the only complicated uh, part on uh, this uh, sander that I've demonstrated to you. I've got uh, two pieces of shafting here. One piece has to be the width of the final project there, so once you determine uh, what belt you're using, I'm using a six inch belt, which is actually over six inches. So if I take these, I think I got nine, nine pieces of three quarter plywood, is just uh, the right width there so I just cut out some squares there and of course you need some other uh, one for the other side too and it's going to be longer because you'll either put a pulley on here or uh, or put uh, this little piece of uh, rod through there and drive it off your uh, wood lay there which makes it really fast but uh, I'm just going to show you just the basic steps here. Of course, it's going to be repeated for these uh, rollers. The, the drive roller, which is the back one here, I'm going to drill a 5 8 hole in there because that's the size of the shaft. Do you use the different size shaft? Well, of course, you'd do that. And the front roller, I'm going to uh, drill a larger than 5 8 and I'll show you why later. And because there's two holes you have to drill on the front uh, 
the front pulley there. So anyway, uh, so this is how I do it. Now you could do it other methods. Some people will use uh, hole saws and stuff like that, but I'm just going to find the, the center of uh, each one and then I'll drill it. Okay, I'm going to use a drill press. It's always nice to have a drill press for an operation like this. Forrester bits uh, sure do a nice job. You get an accurate, smooth hole. For woodwork, I wouldn't want to be without them. And there we go. Okay, this is how uh, I'm going to uh, make these. You can use a hole saw or cut them by hand or various things like that. But uh, I made this little uh, jig thing here and I wanted uh, something that would the piece would just turn on. So I took a, a socket, quarter inch drive socket and screwed it down at the right distance. So then it makes it so much faster than a hole saw, but if you use a hole saw, don't forget to drill a oh, half inch hole just on the outside of the ring so the sawdust has a place to exit the saw, otherwise you burn, your, uh, you burn the teeth on the hole saw. Isn't that easy? Uh, I find that so much faster than easier than using a hole saw. Okay, the front roller in uh, for this sander, the bearings are mounted within the roller, so we have to drill a hole with a Forrester bit the size of the of the bearing that you're using. Uh, this bearing here is a 6202 5 8 shaft. Uh, the hole is 5 eighths. They're kind of a special uh, sizing. A regular 6202 has a metric hole, but uh, maybe in uh, Europe or somewhere you'll use uh, maybe a 6202 and you'll have metric uh, uh, Forrester bits or you may use an entirely different uh, bearing. But uh, in North America here, being we have fractional sizes, the hole that I need to drill here is one and three eighths, and I need to drill it to, to the depth of the bearing, so which is about the thickness of uh, that. So I'll go ahead and do that, and then we'll switch to a different size. Okay, now I'm going to switch to a different size. I'm not going to do uh, uh, 5 eighths, which is the shaft size, but I'm going to do uh, 3 quarters uh, because the shaft stays still in this way and the roller rotates around the shaft. So we've got the, the little center point there, so that will index on the point there. That's why we do the outer hole first. and. Uh, my plan is on this one is to take this three-quarter piece of metal here and stack them all on that and uh, then drive it out after and maybe that'll keep them lined up perfectly while the glue is drying because when you squeeze it with clamps they tend to sh shift to one side or the other and maybe that'll keep it completely lined up. So we'll drill the other hole here right in the center do the other one while I'm doing it. And that will provide lots of clearance for the uh, 
shaft, 5 8 shaft. So I'll go ahead and drill all the other ones just like I drilled the back one and uh, then uh, we'll cut the circle out. Just about ready to uh, assemble all the uh, discs on my uh, shaft here. But I've done a couple things first. Is in the center, I put a drilled a hole through the center and put a pin in there. It's just a piece of 3 16 bolt. And also on the end, I've drilled it through to put a 3 16 bolt. It depends on how you're going to uh, actually drive the uh, unit if you're using it on the lathe. I made this little unit with a slot in it there, and that just Okay, I went over and uh, cut that out. Uh, you can see what that looks like. And uh, then that'll just slip in there. And now we've got it with the glue in there. That's a nice, that'll drive it. That'll drive that whole back uh, drum there. Okay, so anyway, I'll be putting this together now and uh, then working on the front roller. One thing I uh, didn't mention, because I hadn't done it yet, is you need a, a center drilled hole in the end if you're going to use it on the wood lathe with the uh, uh, tailstock, with your live center and your tailstock. And the shafting you probably have to get at a machine shop anyway, and it uh, would be wise just to have them uh, pop a center hole into one end for you. I have a metal lathe here so I did it on there. You could do it on the metal on the wood lathe with your uh, if you have your drive set up like that and then a steady rest here. I actually use the steady rest on the metal lathe to do that but yes it can be done on the wood lathe yourself. Uh, but you need that uh, center drill in order to do that. All wood shops should have a center drill. It's handy for all sorts of things. Because it's got the proper uh, taper on it. I whip one, put one in on the other end too, just in case I needed it someday. So I'd have it there too. But uh, you really only need it on the one end. Uh, if you're using it on the... On the uh, wood lathe. And if you're not using it on the wood lathe, I might mention too, if you're, when you get a machine shop, have them uh, put a, a, a keyway slot in it so you can uh, use it with a pulley and a motor. I've marked uh, where the uh, first one is going to go here and then I'm just going to set it into the vise and slip it over and then the first one will just slip over and then uh, glue and keep stacking them up and put the pin back in when I get to the where the one I want to be for the lock and then uh, continue on up. Okay now that it's all uh, glued up here we have to lay that down to uh, a specific diameter. I'm working on a, a three inch roller. I think that is uh, uh, a great a good size. You could have it smaller or bigger depending on what kind of sander you're using. I've of course uh, as I said before I drilled the uh, end of it here with a center drill so I can use the live center because this will be used on my lathe and I've mounted in the drive here which is that wood that was drilled on the thing so it's exactly center with a little slot in there for that uh, pin there. And uh, so anyway, it just takes a little bit and this is very important that this uh, roller here is uh, same measurement one side as the other and it has to be straight and flat. The back roller or your drive roller needs to be flat from one side to the, the next. Anyway, I'll go ahead and get that done. The uh, front roller takes a little bit more, uh, it's a little different process here. But, uh, so we'll give this a try. The 
first thing that I did there is I wanted to remove all the bumps of the uh, from the glue there and then we can get down to business uh, to uh, I'm using a spindle gouge which leads a very smooth surface. To turn the uh, front roller down, it's a little different process here. You, uh, we drill that uh, hole for the bearing and I've uh, pressed the bearing in there. And uh, the other side, there's the hole and you don't, there's no bearing there. So what I've done here on the lathe here is put a, a scrap piece of wood here and turned it down so it just slides inside there and with a little bit of taper so it uh, it's going to be tight on the taper there and then the back part here so come into the uh, bearing there and that perfectly centers it here and it's perfectly centered on that side there. Now this roller, turn it down flat and then once it's flat and you measured it on both ends, uh, then we take about a sixteenth off the corner here and make a slight crown. You have to have the crown on the front roller, the front roller only, not the back roller at all. So that's uh, set up here and I'll just lay it down straight like I did the last one and then I'll put uh, a, a, a crown to it. Okay, I've got the both rollers uh, laid down. I had to take it down about a, take an extra sixteenth off because this one was almost perfect because it was right on the shaft. This one, a couple of them were a little bit off, so I had to take it down about a sixteenth less than three inches, but you kind of want to get that done before you go to to put the sides on and the bearings there. So anyway, the bearings still in this end here, and I have to put another bearing there, and then put the, sh put the shaft through. And you can see here, we can get a picture here. You could see this before. There's a little bit of uh, a crown there. Here's the uh, drums, both of them turned down. The uh, rear one uh, has to be laid flat and the front one is got a slight crown in them. I had a calipers, micrometer calipers, so I was able to get them quite accurate, but uh, any type of caliper will work. And I've also been working on the uh, side pieces here. It'd be good to have some hardwood. I just happened to find some maple and uh, that'll be the drive end there and the uh, roller end is going to have a, a slot in it for the shaft there. So my total length on this one here that I've cut for three inch rollers and uh, is 20 inches and a half and then I can cut a little bit off if I need to. I have to have enough room for the plate on the end here for that'll be put on to the end for adjustment but that's the basic shape there. Next thing I'll do is uh, drill the holes with Forrester bits and so it's come along very quickly. Once the rollers are done, that's probably the most um, the hardest part and that'll only take uh, one afternoon at the very most. And there's a little bit of work that has to be done on the shaft for the front there. We have to have, there has to be holes drilled through the ends and threads put in. But I'll show you how to do that.